Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with the Miller Multimatic 215. Uh, so in this video today, we're going to go over the features of the 215, uh, what the 215 can come with, and, and some of the uh, stuff around it. We're going to weld with it as well. Um, so let's dive right into the video. So you got, I got my setup right now. I got my, the MIG gun on, my ground clamp on, so we're going to do a little MIG weld with 030, the Hobart wire that it came with. Um, and also have my tape kit set out here. So this package comes a couple of different ways. You can get this as a package together and you save a little bit of money, or you can buy them separately. But the machine itself, the Multimatic comes with MIG gun, ground clamp, and then stick electrode holder. So no TIG uh, application comes right just with the bare machine, but you can add the kit, and this comes with the TIG torch, TIG kit with consumables, and then a foot pedal. Um, so we'll link all this down below. You can check out the packages that, on that. Um, and then we'll open that here in a minute. I'll show you what that comes with. But just to jump in on the features on this 215. So if you're familiar with Miller Multimatic systems, uh, there was three at one time. They used to have Multimatic 200, which is no longer. Then they, had, they came out with the Multimatic 215, which is what we have here today. Then they have the Multimatic 220. So what this machine does um, differently than the 220, uh, it will not weld aluminum on AC. Um, there's no AC output on the 215, you'd have to go to the 220. Uh, but this one will do DC electrode negative for steel and stainless steel, and then it also MIG weld and stick weld. But no aluminum on the 215. Um, so uh, this, this came out when the 200 was still around, and this has a, uh, been a very popular machine. Um, a lot of home hobby garage guys uh, want the weld in their garage. They, they love this unit, um, and they they are very nice, and I'll go over some of the features. So we'll flip it on on the back. You can see I got my gas port. I got two gas ports, one for MIG, one for TIG. They're clearly labeled. Um, today we're plugged into 220, but this unit also does 110 as well, so it's a 110, 220 unit. But on 220 power at 200 amps, we've got about a 20% duty cycle. So not too bad, um, and, and like I said, this, this machine will weld up two three eights, but it's not going to be an industrial fabrication machine, let's just say that. So it, you only have a 20% duty cycle at, at 200 amps, but it does push out 215 amps. So let's flip this unit on, show you. It's going to give us our input voltage, so we're at 201 volt right now. And right now I just got to set up 030, eighth inch material, and we have auto set turned on. So this, this unit comes standard with auto set, and what that does is you just declare what material or what wire diameter, what material thickness, and then it gives you a suggested uh, out outcome, so voltage and wire feed speed. Um, and you can adjust that. You can go outside, but you can see the little target there. It gives you a target voltage and a target wire feed speed to run at. But you can adjust that outside of those parameters, or you can just shut that auto set off and run manual mode. But where I like auto set, and this has been really, really popular, is I just tell what wire and what material. And it's gonna get you pretty close to the ballpark of what you need. So let's just go back up to the processes here. So we have our flux cord, so we can run get uh, self-shielded flux cord through this unit. And it's gonna tell us to flip-flop the leads because you gotta run electronegative on self-shielded, but we have auto set for that as well. Then we got MIG stainless steel. It's gonna tell us what gas to use, which is a trimix. And then it's gonna show us what player we should be running which is the same electrode positive. It's gonna give us a setting for that. We'll go down to MIG steel C25, so it's gonna tell us 7525 gas. It's gonna show us how to hook up our leads, which is electrode positive, and it's gonna give us a recommended setting. We'll go down to 100% CO2, so that's an option on this unit. So you guys out there that uh, wanna run 100% CO2, we do, we'll link at the adapter down below because the regulator that this comes with only fits a CGA 580, which is a 7525 bottle, but we can link that. So MIG aluminum, we can put a spool gun on this. So the spool may 100 or 150. Uh, either one of those will run on this unit. Um, and, and it works really well. I have a buddy that has a, he has a 200, um, and then they also have a 215, and they run a spool gun on those. And they actually, they really work really well. And then we got TIG lift arc. So this is without a foot pedal. Um, I'm sorry, we'll lift arc remote. This one is with the foot pedal and it's gonna show you we got a cable error because we don't have it hooked up correctly for TIG welding. But then we go down to TIG lift arc, which is just scratch start TIG. 
and then we go down to stick. So it's going to turn our outputs on, um, which it, which that means is that your stinger, if you're stick welding, or your tungsten, if you're just lift arc tigging, is always hot. So if you lay it down, it's going to arc. So you got to be careful when you do that. But if you go up to the lift arc remote with the foot pedal, you're going to have that foot pedal amperage control. But another thing to tell you is here, this unit does not have high frequency. So you're going to have to still touch the tungsten into the plate with your foot on the foot pedal, but you can control your amperage at that point. So, um, but it's still a lift arc with a foot pedal. Uh, no high freak start on this. But let's open this thing up. Nice pack, it's pretty light, 38 pounds. Not bad at all. Um, flip up the door here, I'll show you. We got our, our parameter chart. And it's gonna give you a set, set of parameters to run. Uh, a whole plethora of sizes of steel and then all the amperages, wire feed speed, and voltages that you need to use. Um, I'm gonna give you a good depiction of your changing polarity, and that's for when you go to self-shielded or TIG welding. But nice, uh, that's what I love about these Millers, they always have these on there, they're pretty sturdy. Um, I've seen some old Miller Maddox that have these in there, and boy, they still look very good. I mean, they, they, they look old, but I mean, they're, they're still legible, you can read them. So on the inside, I got the 030 wire on there. But this is a two pound spool. It will fit an 11 pound spool. This is the adapter. You just gotta take this nut off. That slides over and then you can fit your 11 pound spool. It comes with the 110 adapter there for the 220, 110 unit. And that's, that's buckled in that corner there. I just, I just slid this in the corner to hold on to it. And then we have our cast aluminum drive roll power block system. So pretty rugged on that. Um, it's just a, single idler wheel with one drive roll, and that's got a three different grooves cut in it, so we can run the 023, 024 wire, 030, and then we can also run the 035 wire through this unit. And then you just, it's just a quick twist, quick change and set. So you just, and it's all three rollers in one. Pretty nice, I, I, I like that about the Millers, it's pretty simple. We got our tensioner for our MIG gun, so pull the MIG gun in and then that puts tension on it. We'll pop that down, close that back. Wire tensioner, so we got it set at two, right around two there, that's pretty good. I mean, you go, a lot of people like to crank those down and, and really you don't have to do, you know, a two to three in that area is gonna be perfect for this wire. Um, we got our MIG gun control right here that we plugged in. This here, uh, the phone jack is for the uh, remote pedal for the TIG to, for TIG welding. So that's going to run, you can run it right through the front of the machine and come up to here and plug in. Um, and I'll show you guys what's in that TIG kit right now. So pretty nice little unit. Um, compact, uh, very popular in uh, just guys with hot rods or automotive motorcycle guys. Um, it's popular because it's light uh, and it does exactly what they want. So they're going to run, you know, those guys are usually running 023 or 030 wire and they got no trouble with the 215. Um, and then some guys get into that aluminum, they buy the spool gun, throw a spool gun on there. And uh, like my buddies that have these, they do a lot of aluminum repair on uh, ramps and gates and stuff like that. And it works, works perfectly. You can throw it in the bed of your truck, um, and get it going, and then obviously we got our gas bottle. Comes with a regulator too. But in this TIG kit here, comes with a secondary regulator, which is pretty cool. Um, that's very nice. That way you can keep both your argon and your 7525 or your rolling gas hooked up. Keep them both hooked up into the back if you're not gonna move this thing around. And that way they're always ready to go. You just disconnect and put your TIG torch on. So inside here, gas hose for the, from regulator to the uh, machine. And here's our foot pedal itself, right there in the kit. So, and then the amp and all connection cord, or the, not amp and all, but the foam jack cord's in there, uh, already attached. So that's the foot pedal that it comes with. Put that back in there nicely. And then, in the bottom of this box here, We have our TIG torch. So that's a that's a through to gas DENS connection. That's a um, 
25 millimeter DINs. That's a special connection by Miller. Um, you can put other torches on this, but this is the torch that uh, comes with the kit. Um, and then obviously you get a consumable kit and it's a, uh, you know, it's a Miller uh, WP. It's an A150 by Miller, but it's a Weldcraft torch and it's a WP-17. So if you have a WP-17 now, it's gonna fit all those consumables. And uh, looks like it comes with an instruction guide in the bottom there, of what to do with all that. So let's get this all closed up. We'll give this thing a shot. We're gonna, we're gonna make well with it, just see how it runs. All right, so I got suited up here. We're gonna give this thing a shot. Now I got 030. We do have some eighth inch material. We're just gonna run auto set and see where this thing runs at. Um, give it a shot. Pretty good now. You notice that fan kicked on, um, so that that fan inside just trying to cool down the internals on that component. But well, the good got a real nice short arc on that. Um, I think the auto set boy ran right where I liked it. It was it's pretty nice. So you know, all of this this machine for the size of where it's at in the market, um, it's got a soft soft arc start. So it, it's it's got a uh, function where it, when it starts, it's got a little bit. You want to explain it. it just transitions into the start a little bit better compared to the competition not well with both uh, all the competition of Lincoln East Side in this field in this range um, and where it compared I, this thing really does perform well in the mig welding side of things um, as far as the stick and the TIG I, I won't say it's the the best stick welder in the world but if you're in a pinch or you, you you know, you have some sort of application where you got to stick weld it. It'll absolutely do it. Um, but there is better options out there. And then on the TIG side, if you're only ever going to do uh, steel or stainless steel, it's perfect for that. Um, and it, it's nice because you can have that option of TIG welding. Me personally, though, if I were going to choose a machine, I like I like the 215. I like that you can do all of that and you can get a TIG kit and, and hook it up. But one of my least favorite things on these is the connection for the foot pedal. So it's, it's, it's an old phone jack basically, and, and, and they run it on the foot pedal, and, and, not, and I'm not knocking it, it's just, it seems like if we step up to the 220, where we can get AC output at that point, we can take well with, you know, on aluminum, we get a nice 14 pin connection on that, with that foot pedal and that take kit. So that, in my eyes, that, that's, that 14 pin connection is more durable, and it holds up better, but if you're only ever gonna use stainless steel or steel TIG, um, God, this machine probably will do everything you want it to do um, with that. And then you might never use the foot pedal either. You know, you just might TIG weld with it and, uh, you know, lift our TIG um, and may never use that. But in my eyes, that's where I think it lacks is that connection on that particular unit. But all in all, we're 38 pounds light, heavy, you know, it's pretty heavy duty for what it is um, in the field of where it falls in. But if you guys want any pricing or quotes on anything, please reach out to us. We'll do our best to get that over to you. Um, and stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate all you guys. And uh, stay tuned for some more.